Welcome back. Back to some real work today. The alternator in this car needs to come out. Now, uh, you subscribers will be familiar with this car. It's the old uh, Ford Duratec, the uh, two-liter petrol. And the alternator is at the um, back of the engine, at the top. Uh, but it is quite an awkward job because um, of access, essentially. Uh, it's quite simple. Conceptually, you just need to undo a few bolts, disconnect a few electrical connectors, and then take it out. Um, but access is difficult. You need to get at it from the top, but also from underneath. So the car needs to be lifted with sufficient room for you to crawl underneath to the back of the engine and you know, move um, breaker bars and the like around in there. And also you need to get through the um, behind the right hand wheel um, to access the accessory belt. And the, uh, the workshop manual actually instructs that the alternator should be taken out through the wheel well. You are supposed to technically disconnect the tie rod. So you break apart the, um, the, the, the steering rod on the right hand side to make room to then uh, take out the alternator assembly like that. That's a bit silly, you don't need to do that. I'm going to show you a better way. Um, but it's not so simple because there is uh, not quite enough room to actually remove the alternator as a complete assembly, either out the top or at the bottom, even though it looks like you might have. So um, you, obviously there are different reasons to, uh, to do this. In my case, I just want to replace the pulley on the alternator and there's uh, insufficient room to get a tool onto the pulley uh, so as to do it in the car. So the alternator has to come out. Thank you, Ford. Um, but that's uh, you, obviously you might, you might want to be renewing an alternator or doing something else. So let's get on with it. The very first step is to disconnect the battery negative. And uh, while this is a sort of best practice with many electrical jobs, it's absolutely critical in this case simply because you'll be disconnecting the positive lead from the alternator uh, and it will end up floating around and probably contacting all of the metal grounds around it, uh, which would obviously create a short circuit. So ensure that the battery circuit is broken by taking off the negative and uh, placing it in such a way that it cannot accidentally reconnect. Next is to start taking the necessary bits off the alternator and the belt can go first. Uh, I've done other videos on the accessory drive on this engine. Uh, I've replaced a number of pulleys in the last six months actually, and uh, also a video specifically on the belt itself. So if you want to see this in more explicit detail, then go have a look at those. But in short, you uh, access the belt tensioner through the wheel well like this, and you need a 15 millimeter socket with a short extension and a bar to lever uh, on the automatic tensioner. Uh, when you apply clockwise torque on the pulley bolt, it will compress and loosen the belt uh, enough that you can slip it off somewhere. Now you can try taking it directly off the alternator, but that pulley is ribbed with an edge. So uh, it's always easier to take it off one of the reverse pulleys like the uh, water pump here because they don't have the edge and uh, that means that you have uh, it'll come off more easily and there's also less chance of damaging the belt. Uh, then the belt can come off the alternator and be dropped away uh, and I would release the tensioner and uh, recover the tool because you'll probably need to use it. Next, uh, this is looking from underneath, uh, there are the various cabling attachments. Uh, on this car there is this cable which has nothing to do with the alternator. It's the crankshaft position sensor wire that uh, comes down from the main loom to the rear side of the crankshaft pulley. Uh, but it's clipped on the alternator brackets and body. Uh, there's also this power steering rack hose to nowhere that's sort of uh, in the way. I just needed to slide it around a bit to make room. I didn't, it didn't need removing or anything. Now this is all in pursuit of getting this air intake duct off. That's the big black plastic elbow. Uh, it has two plastic clips on each side which you can push in by finger and sort of walk the duct out toward the rear. Uh, as it starts to move though, you'll have to deal with that cable, uh, particularly where it's clipped to the duct bracket. Um, I also had this cable tie holding it to the alternator body, which uh, needed snipping. Uh, then the duct will be free to come out. Here it is. Now you can see those square holes where the clips are uh, that hold it on. Uh, next, the cabling that actually is to do with the alternator. First, this plug for the regulator. 
which can be a bit awkward. It, uh, it comes away like this, and the way it's released is this tab here, uh, which I used a blade to press in, as it's really on the wrong side and it's uh, hard to get a good angle for fingers. Now, the other cable is the battery positive lead, which runs via the starter motor. Uh, and this is the one that will short circuit if it touches the alternator body or the car's chassis. So again, ensure that you have disconnected the battery before you uh, take this out. So it's held on with a 10 millimeter hex nut, which is uh, easily undone with a little socket handle. And those are the, uh, the bits and pieces, so to say, all removed. So now the alternator itself can just be unbolted and removed. Uh, it's held to the engine with three 15 millimeter bolts uh, for which you will need a breaker bar, something like this one. Uh, the bolts aren't majorly tight, but a ratchet might not be up to it. Uh, I'd suggest that you break them all loose first and uh, then actually undo them with a ratchet handle. So the one on the top is easy, but the two on the bottom do require undercar access. And uh, I found it helpful to use a deep socket on the right hand one. Uh, because it's directly adjacent, the little sheet metal bracket and a, uh, a short extension would work too. Now, the other thing I'll say here is uh, because of the issues with bolting into the soft aluminium of the engine body, it's smart to reuse the same bolts in the same holes that they came out of because mixing them around will add extra wear to the threads when you put them back in. And uh, being paranoid about threads in alloy is always a good habit. So I just place them so that I can remember which is which. Uh, and you can see one of them here, the one on the far side, has um, quite a bit of alloy corrosion on it, which wanted cleaning off with a wire brush. And I left the top one in until last, because of course the whole alternator will hang off it. Uh, but when ready, that bolt can be taken out while you support the alternator's weight. Um, and then you will be interested to find out that once the alternator is off the engine, it is in fact still trapped because there is not enough room to take it out. I tried every different angle here, but there's no way to get it through this gap and it won't go out the bottom either. So that's annoying. And uh, this is where the workshop manual instructs to disconnect the tie rod from the steering knuckle so as to uh, take it out the side uh, for which you would need to break the nut and disconnect the ball joint which would really be over the top and unnecessary. Because instead, what I did was uh, lower the alternator assembly down carefully and uh, rest it at the bottom here. Uh, carefully because it's heavy and there are various rubber boots in this area which you wouldn't want to damage. Uh, but then I just used an eight millimeter hex spanner to uh, undo all those nuts that you can see at the corners of the plastic shroud. Now that shroud is just the uh, second part of the air intake duct for the alternator fan. It basically just pulls in air that's a bit farther removed and so cooler, um, farther removed from the exhaust manifold. And it comes off really easily, um, as you can see. But then I was left with uh, what was actually just the alternator. And lo and behold, it is now small enough that it will fit through the top opening. I still need to be careful with the aircon pipes and the like around the area. Uh, but basically it's uh, very simple like this. Okay, and with that, it will come out. And uh, here it is, nice and simple, right? So the, um, the bit that we disconnected was this, and it just goes on like this and off. So simple enough, once you know how, just do that and it will come out, no problem. Okay, so then you can go ahead and uh, do whatever kind of job it is you wanted to do. In my case, I'm gonna replace the pulley. Uh, that's gonna be in a separate video though, so uh, check that out if you want to see that. Otherwise, um, um, do whatever it is you need to do, or get the new one if that's what you're doing, and uh, we can talk about putting it back in. Now this is very much a case of installation is the reverse of removal. You just saw how this came out, so uh, putting it back in is quite simple. It just needs to be lowered through the gap and again placed carefully at the bottom, uh, whereupon the plastic shroud can be reattached. And by the way, I put these bits of plastic through the dishwasher to clean them out nicely because what else are dishwashers for? And yeah, the, uh, the little nuts just need to be put back on all four corners and uh, snugged down with the spanner. After which the alternator wants to go back on the engine body and uh, while it's kind of awkward, 
I was able to lift it with my fingers of the one hand and uh, feed the top bolt through with the other. Uh, it's hard to see, so I kind of had to do this by feel. And the trick here is to get the bolt safely threaded into the hole while keeping the weight off it, because otherwise you risk cross-threading or even ripping the bolt out of the hole if you put all the weight on it um, when it's only got you know one or two threads engaged, maybe. Uh, so once the bolt's threaded in, I used the ratchet handle to do it up, but I left it loose because the bottom bolts need to go in first so as to correctly position it before it's actually tightened. So I'd say uh, do be careful with these. Uh, if they won't go in, uh, if they jam up when turning them in, uh, then stop and check that they're properly square, lined up, you know, see what's wrong. You don't want to strip a thread. Um, anyway, I snugged them down with the ratchet and then uh, when all are in place it's time for the torque wrench. And the uh, the tightening spec here is 47 newton meters, if you can find 47 on your wrench. Right, then the electrical connectors. Just, uh, by the way, I use some of this uh, CRC226 product, uh, which is basically an electrical protectant spray. I figured I might as well since they were disconnected. Anyway, the positive lead back on its uh, threaded rod terminal and the regulator cable plugged back in. It just pushes home. And the nut on the terminal, just uh, snug it down tight with a ratchet. Now the second piece of the air duct, the, uh, the elbow, uh, fits around those cables and I just needed to make sure that the crankshaft sensor cable was on the outside of the bracket, otherwise it gets trapped on the wrong side. But it basically just pushes onto the shroud and uh, from the bottom the cable clip can be sorted out. Again, it should just push into the hole on the duct bracket. And I also cable tied it back to the alternator body. I don't think this is standard, uh, but without this I had a problem years ago uh, where the engine kept cutting out for no reason. And I could not work it out until I looked at the crankshaft sensor and uh, I saw that this cable was brushing up against the half shaft and uh, somehow causing problems. So it needs to be tied out of the way. The last thing to do on the alternator now is to put the belt back on the pulley and uh, then of course route it correctly everywhere else. Uh, again, I have a specific video just on the belt, so no elaborate detail here. Uh, essentially, I hold the tensioner in with this uh, bar jammed against the steering knuckle and then uh, put the belt on the water pump pulley last because it's flat, so it just slides on there easily. Uh, then I release the tensioner and uh, just go uh, over all the ribbed pulleys to check that the belt is correctly located in all of the right V's and uh, obviously that it's actually correctly rooted. Uh, so now we're reaching the end and the battery can be reconnected uh, but only if that positive lead has been safely bolted home by now and there's no chance of anything touching it. Then uh, start the car. Uh, it should fire up okay and uh, just once more check that the belt is all in motion in the way it should be. Well, that's about it for this video. Uh, with the engine running you would check that the alternator is in fact providing now a sensible charging voltage of around 14 volts uh, using either a voltmeter which you would normally do or I'm just using the readout here from the uh, car's PCM. Uh, you'll need to do a few other minor things such as recalibrate the electric windows because their memory gets lost when you disconnect the battery. Uh, similar story with the audio head unit uh, depending on the setup there. Uh, otherwise that really is about it. Uh, remaining things are the splash guard inside the wheel well. That's just those uh, four bolts that go back in through the plastic. Very simple, no need to show you that in detail. And then of course the uh, right side wheel needs to go on and uh, then the car gets lowered. Uh, but that's it, alternator replaced. So I hope that was helpful and uh, have fun.